Our girl is with us tonight, uh, Joni Rivers. She used to be called the Queen of Dominoes. Because she was a pushover. But anyway... I want to tell you... No. <laughs> she opens uh, tomorrow night at the MGM Grand Hotel in Las Vegas, and she has just signed a motion picture writing contract with Columbia. Would you welcome Miss Joan Rivers? <laughs> You know. It should have only happened. Hey, it's thank nice you for being trip. here. I understand you had a little, little you got a little oh. cold, and um, you still were nice enough to come here tonight. I know well, how it is when you have to come out and do a show and you're not feeling. Bucks a buck. Bucks a buck. <laughs> Grab it when you can. Grab it when you can. It's, it's all tinsel. When the curtain comes down, it's to the motion picture home. Ten years from now, when I call you and say I'm feeling lousy, can I come on? You'll say, J. No. Who? Do you, you ever worry about not being a success, of growing old, and saying, oh, people are going to forget me, and it's, it's such a transitory business we're in that when your show is off, you're not in front of the public, you say, oh, and you're sitting around saying, like, you see some of those old movies where they're going through their scrapbook saying, there I was, the, you know, the picture in 1918. Always, I'm w but I know when it happens, really? I will take it very calmly. I will panic. I'm going to have a, just a giant garage sale. Everything goes sell out. Sell the kid, the dogs, everything. <laughs> just line them up and sell them off. Well, anyway, thank but you for coming. No, but I'm well. I, 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 a woman doctor made me, made me well. I don't can't imagine you going to a woman doctor because you don't like nurses generally. But. No, and I don't like women doctors after this, but uh, she took my thermometer, you know, my temperature with a meat thermometer. So originally, I didn't... <laughs> as you get undressed, she's going tacky. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, but uh, it's very specific because I'm into liberation so much that I figured I'd go, yes, one sure. other person out there going, hooray, and then beaten up. I think it's but, um, women are doctors. Yes, but yeah. it's hard, you know, because like she put me in the stirrup side. I'd settle. And, um, it's just... <laughs> That's a no-no, huh? It's a no-no. I, well, I don't know much, no, thank you. And, um, <laughs> I don't know, because, like, um, we're all used to, to men. I, I think I'd prefer to go back to a man doctor, because I would rather be looked at when I'm naked by an impersonal man, because then I feel I'm still at home. And it doesn't mean... <laughs> <laughs> but, poor Edgar. Poor, poor Edgar. Poor Edgar, poor me. Yeah, well, that's true. I never thought. you want to have fun, he says, good idea, and leaves the house. You know how it's <laughs> Meaning the, the, the love is, has dropped off in your mouth? I mean... No, it hasn't dropped you off. Know, nothing can be like the honeymoon forever. When you people, you know, get married... You know, youngsters always think, how great to get married. Wow, be together, you know... Uh, you know, Huggy it kissy? Has, yeah, it has to taper off a little bit. Yeah, but how much can it taper? I mean, you yeah. know, he said to me the other day, I said, I, I'm not looking so good. I need a little beauty sleep. He said, you'd have to go into a coma. <laughs> I mean, yeah, that's not music. That's cruel. No, he's but, cruel. Oh, also, he's doing things like he's cutting back on my um, expenses. He made me fly. I just played the Latin Casino in New that's Jersey. That's right. Last time you were here, you were heading Yeah. There. And um, he made me fly back, no frills. Oh, I keep reading those ads. Yeah. Oh, I've never taken one. Tell me about don't. it. Don't. No offense to the airlines, but you know, I might. I mean, they have no intercom. No intercom? The pilot says, we're going to pass, crash, pass it back. I mean, everyone's like, no bathroom, it's on a system. Little Jewish ladies can close your eyes. And they pass back a styrofoam cup that said occupado. I mean, it was just. That's no frill. No. Stewardess opened the window over Jersey and screened slops. I mean, that's not right. Do you, Do you want to see the movie? What? what what's the, the movie? The, the in-flight movie? You get a movie? That was it. Well, they sit and do a shadow graph on... Yeah. <laughs> we had two, two bunnies kissing. <laughs> that was the movie. Well, they're and all he competing. made me take that. There could be... And the stewardesses... Um, you know, right? But they're still pretty, aren't they? Are you kidding? No frills? Do you know what's showing up there? <laughs> I mean, it's... You know, Rejects, huh? The knuckles were hitting the ground. <laughs> <laughs> but, but the men loved them. Here we go again. No yeah. one laughed but me. I said, look at the stewardess. It's going, erf, erf, and it's got a bow. <laughs> and like, to get her to come down the aisle, we threw a bone. I mean, it's like a monologue. <laughs> you know, aren't, male, aren't the males now accusing women of being... Um, counter uh, segregate because they want to, you know, have male flight attendants. 
But the airlines don't like that because they found that... Uh, it's the men. The yeah. men want to be, you know, cute to cute. The men end up marrying them so much, you know, and this... Um, and a lot of them are lovely, like Shirley Fonda's married to Henry Fonda, and she's right, terrific, she and they're friends of mine and everything. And Rich Little married a lovely girl, but most of them are really banana heads, you know. <laughs> uh, Johnny, a friend of mine, we won't mention names, a very, very well-known actor, just married a stewardess. Girl is a waitress. She walked down the aisle holding the bouquet like that. I mean, you know. <laughs> Old habit. <laughs> you go to the house for dinner, she buckles you in. I mean, it's just, you know. Then he says, isn't she cute? <laughs> yeah. Men are so shallow. Really? You think so? Oh, yes. Yes, I'm sorry. That's why I'm glad I'm, I'm getting older, because I'm getting wiser. Yeah. Oh, you gotta find some reasons. Well, you always said you were kind of, you, you said you, you felt that you were not bright when you were a child. Now, you're, Melissa is about seven now? Seven. Seven. Is she Very bright? Very bright. Oh, How do you tell God. when a seven years old is bright? Well, she says things like, Mommy, you look terrific. Ah. I would say that. Ah, good. She's, well, she, they took a, uh, an intelligence test in school. She came out number one. Which is, of course, it was for the second graders. Uh, no, but, you know, no, but um, um, I was scared she was gonna be dumb. I was scared one, first of all, see, people, People don't tell you what you should know through life. Like you said they should know about the honeymoon isn't going to continue. Sure. Right? Nobody tells you. Everyone tells you your baby is going to be gorgeous when it's first born. A baby when it's first born is a mess. I'm sorry to tell you this. A little grim. Right? A little grim. Wet head. <laughs> you know, the, and it, the, the, the nurses, it looks just like you. I mean, I mean. <laughs> You're in labor 108 days, and that's your first compliment. Look, it's just, I hit it with a kid. Mind your own <laughs> And they're red. Red. You, you see them. Yeah, I think it's kind of a shock for new fathers and maybe even new mothers. No, not new mothers, but new yes. fathers. The first time to see them, the first couple of hours, because it's... Uh, and hairy. Melissa had a lot of hair on the head. And then, you know, I mean, they had to put a little sign on it said human. They gave it a little grace. <laughs> and, then, and you feel so much. And then, like, it takes, like, that, what is it, 24, 36 hours, and they pull together, and it's yeah. adorable. Sure. You know. But nobody, nobody tells you, like, when is your, when is your kid, when do you know your kid's going to be dumb? I was scared I was going to have a very dumb kid. Yeah. I wanted to give her, like, a simple name. I wanted to call her Otto, so she'd only have two letters to remember. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> Does it make sense? Of course, never thought of that. <laughs> OT and she's home free. <laughs> she stutters, she can get the other two out. <laughs> so, cause, cause, cause a friend of mine has a kid, I mean like, dumb, I mean it's dumb, the kid is nine years old right. and needs two hands to brush her teeth, you know. That's not, <laughs> not bright. <laughs> one to hold the toothbrush, one to push it. <laughs> Two hands, eh? Two hey, hands. My heaven. <laughs> Would you, do you? Melissa, what did your, your children name? Did you pick your names or your wife? Um, no, we, we changed a couple of boys' names after they were born, strangely enough, because for some reason in California, it used to be a rule that you could not take the baby home unless you had named the child. I don't know whether that still exists, oh, but it did then. And uh, yeah, you said we could, we said, well, we're not sure. I have Christopher, uh, Ricky, and Corey, Richard and, and Corey. But we had two of them, uh, different names, and we changed them, but we had to go to court, you know, before they were old enough to really know their names, like at a year, to get them legally changed, because they said, you must give the child a name before, and I, who know, why? You don't, you don't know. You know a friend of mine wanted to name a child a biblical name, so uh, she named it Serpent. I mean, you know, because you're crazy sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> well, that, that's a little too biblical, yes. Uh, <laughs> a Catholic friend wanted to give it a religious name, she called it Bingo. I mean, you, you just... <laughs> But you'd already decided on Melissa, Melissa beforehand. Boy or girl, I figured Melissa. Melissa was, oh, come on. Yeah. You wouldn't saddle a child uh, she boys been, with Melissa, would you? No, she would have been Michael. Michael. Okay. See, my sister, we had one, either your name pretty or you should name after the richest relative. <laughs> I figured, oh, don't fool around, you know. If you have a rich relative and a poor relative, why give the poor kid the poor, you know. Yeah, my, we sense. had one rich relative, Aunt Alice, and my sister, which still burns me up, grabbed the name first, you know. <laughs> Named a kid Aunt Alice. Alice. <laughs> <laughs> Think that kid's She's rich? Taking no chances, I'll tell he you. He has right now. <laughs> 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 
Uh, Give a set of blocks for Christmas between 53rd and 58. Ring bone. Uh, <laughs> but anyway, it, she is bright. You work with her at home outside of school? I mean, yes. most parents, you know, don't really sit and spend too much time with their children. They want the school to do it all. Oh, no. I am. I do the homework every night with her. I really, I, I enjoy her so much. I can't Maybe understand the child. homework now. We have Timmy at home, you know, 13, and he's doing this math. And I have the slightest idea what it's all about. The new math, which is so, there's no way. That, but Melissa's only seven, so I still know about Dick, Jane, and Spock. Oh, it's, yeah. It's Are they still, still what have those? they're doing together. But uh, basically, you know, uh, uh, really? see Dick and Jane close the door. <laughs> <you know. laughs> see the rabbit guy. <laughs> I suppose that's the same book. I don't know. <laughs> well, that's the epilogue. I See, here. Spot, take the picture. <laughs> okay, we'll be back to this uh, educational channel in just a moment. <laughs> this brief interruption. <laughs> we are back. <laughs> Got caught, didn't I? <laughs> You're allowed. I try to keep my cigarettes over here so they don't they don't bother people. You know, we, we, what are we talking about? We're talking, we're about, talking about kids growing up. Yeah. Mine are all grown up now, but I, I think back and remember those moments. It's funny, because, like, it's bicentennial year now, you know? And she's just old enough to understand. And I'm a history buff. Yeah. Which you don't know, but I am. 17th and 18th century, I'm crazy for. I didn't know that. Yeah, and um, so I'm so involved in this whole thing. You know, and we're going around the country. I'm touring this time with John Davidson. We're going to see the Liberty Bell. I'm going to see all this stuff. It's stuff she's read about in books. Now you're taking to see it. Now I'm taking to see it. And that Mrs. Ford was out here. That's right. She was just here for. Yes. Wasn't that her birthday? Or uh... she was picked woman. Or woman of the year. That woman of the year. Yeah. I like her very much. I really do. I think she she's seems like a lovely lady. lady. Yeah. Him. It took me a while to warm up to. <laughs> I tried very hard, but you know, he's not colorful. <laughs> you know, he's, oh, everyone gets so tight. I'm doing a life-size painting of him. I'm going to send to him on velvet. I bought it at Thrifty Drugs. And um, it's all by number. <laughs> oh, really? His face is 11. It's very interesting, his whole face. <laughs> I did know all 11 is gray. And, uh, <laughs> but now that he saved the ship, I'm glad, you know? Yeah, it, it worked out pretty good. And she seemed uh, interesting. It was on the news last night that she was at... Um, I think this meeting of some senior citizens out here, and she, uh, on the news, she had a lady we'd had on the show before years ago. Remember Pearl Williams that we had on the show? She was 106 the other day. That's 106 a years old. Yeah. She was on the show. Yes, she was on the show a couple of years ago. She certainly was. Not tonight, Fred. I no, didn't say tonight. You. But uh, I like Betty Ford because you know what? She's snappy, and yet, you know, basically she's a homemaker. Right. And she doesn't make any pretense to be anything else. Are you any better with your homemaker? Are you kidding? Oh. So I like Betty Ford. Have her picture up in the kitchen. <laughs> <laughs> I blow the dirt off it. <laughs> she's a homemaker. Was he a homemaker? Don't look at me. <laughs> Well, I, I served tonight for dinner for a vegetable. I served ketchup. <laughs> I don't fool around. That's a vegetable. <laughs> ketchup. <laughs> Your skills have not uh, not gotten at all. better. Spring cleaning, Edgar said. So I went in the refrigerator. I took out the bulb, whatever glue and glowed. I threw it. <laughs> <laughs> well, kill myself. How's Melissa gonna learn? She's what? She doesn't have to. We're liberated now. She can go out and get a job. You're it's a whole right. other thing. Yeah. See? Or the husband. Or let her husband do it. Yep. And besides. If you're smart, you don't have to do anything. Heidi Abramowitz, the school well, that's tramp. That's the school uh, tramp, tramp, I guess. Johnny. Tramp, tramp, I was going to say. Call it like it is. Fast. That's fast. what we call it when I was in high school. She's fast. When I was in high school, you just, you know, <laughs> you did a lot of that, and oh. your mother would say, ah, don't have her to the house. You know. How is Heidi? Well, now? Yeah. Because, uh, I don't know. <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> you probably would know better than me, because you're a man. I, I haven't is seen her. Is there any man in this audience house, Heidi? She's... Okay. <laughs> she married very well. Yeah. Doesn't that get you crazy? I mean, the girl, it's after minute. The girl slept around. Yeah. I mean, I once said, why do you sleep with anybody? She said to me, practice makes perfect. <laughs> I mean, the girl just didn't stop. Good old Heidi. Married a rich guy, has foreign help. And, you know, it's so, and I understand that uh, the wedding night, he said to her, would you take off your busy And she said to him, that's extra. I mean, you know. <laughs> <laughs> and getting it, just very lucky. And her mother-in-law loves her. Yeah. It's not fair sometimes. How are your in-laws? Well, my mother-in-law, 
I don't think she's crazy about me. Really? I didn't. Why? She never said anything, but you know, my mother wore a cheerleading dress to the wedding, but my mother-in-law wouldn't even buy a dress. That tells you. Showed up in a half slip and a brassiere. I mean, just <laughs> after the ceremony, went out in front of the temple and made the rabbi put her hands on the pillars and then pushed it down. <laughs> That's a sore loser. Yeah. That's a sore loser. <laughs> no boy's mothers like me. No. I used to go out with a dentist. Before you met Edgar? Before I met Edgar. Oh, just was, that, was that close or what? Yeah, but I knew it could. Um, did you ever eat dinner with a dentist? Mm, no, I don't think so. I mean, there's no romance. <laughs> you know what I'm telling you? He would take the napkin and clip it around my neck. It's <laughs> 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 not true, right? The ones were eating little weenies, he stuck them in my mouth. <laughs> <laughs> you had to rinse after every bite, I suppose, yes. <laughs> That could be a problem. He wore a tuxedo in space. I don't want to hear about it. I don't believe you anyway. Okay. Truman Capote will join us in just a moment after this message. Thank you, Doc. If you, uh...